The reigning conference champions are still the only team across the association with single-digit losses and currently have an ever-increasing three-and-a-half game lead in the West. After taking down the blistering hot Mavericks last night, a Dallas team who'd won 10 of their last 12 games, Phoenix ended the game on a 22-6 run, and the now 35-9 team from the Valley has gotten shocking contributions from Toronto legend Bismack Biombo, who helped my Raptors get two wins from the finals back in 2016. Biz had been long out of the NBA until GM James Jones signed him to a 10-day hardship exception to play in the Valley. The 29-year-old springy center from the Republic of Congo ultimately earned himself a full-year contract and has brilliantly helped fill in for DeAndre Ayton. Combine that with D-Book being on fire, dropping a near 50-piece recently, CP3's nightly double-doubles, plus Jay Crowder and Mikhail Bridges playing like top-of-the-league role players, here's every reason for why the Phoenix Suns are quietly dominating the NBA, and stay tuned to see why, if you're not a Suns fan, you may underestimate the squad's potential greatness. Right quick, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll give you a follow back. I left a link in the description for both those platforms. Soon-to-be three-time All-Star Devin Booker's underrated defense was on full display down the stretch against the Mavericks and the Big D. Devin flew in from seemingly out of nowhere to viciously stuff Mavs power forward Dorian Finney-Smith at the basket. Based off the fact that Devin's bucket getting has generated him a reputation for being an offensive talent, that merciless rejection may have shocked you, but Booker's made a habit out of making those types of plays all year, as the man's directly behind the Warriors' Jordan Poole to rank second among all shooting guards in defensive rating. Booker's physicality and lateral quickness are extremely overlooked abilities in his two-way repertoire. Dipping into the beastly shooting guard's game log this month, and it's obvious Devin's in a different type of zone. Utterly locked in, Booker's posting 28 points, 6 boards, 4 dimes, on shooting splits of 44, 35, and 86. That 35% three-point clip in January may seem just average, but keep in mind Devin's volume with those deep-range bombs, as the man's taking 8 triples per game. On the year, Booker is making 39.4% of his triples, which is a career high, and he's taking seven deep range bombs per game. And not only does that amount of attempts from beyond the arc keep the floor space, but make or miss, the star prowess of Booker intimidates his opponents. Also, that volume keeps him in rhythm. Meanwhile, 36, almost 37 year old Chris Paul is defying father time in the best way he knows how to, by tearing up defenses with his shifty handles unrivaled mid-range pull-ups, and not to mention his all-time gifted facilitating. Speaking of that dime dropping, CP3's already passed current Nets head coach Steve Nash, and slowly but surely, if he can play another three to five years, given he's adding about 500 assists per year, the Suns point guard is on his way to catching current Mavericks head coach Jason Kidd to become the second greatest assist man the game has ever seen. However, Paul could care less about that feat, and of course, only gives a damn about adding that elusive championship ring. The Suns' success becomes even more scary when taking into account that Devin Booker missed a couple weeks equating to seven games total, over four different stretches combined, DeAndre Ayton's missed a month now in 16 games overall. Additionally, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, Frank Kaminsky, and JaVale have also missed significant periods of time. Most scarily for fans of other top contenders is that the Valley's electric trio of Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton have only played in 53% of Phoenix's games up to this point so far in 2021-22. The only two Suns players who've participated in every outing are Chris Paul and Mikhail Bridges. According to mangameslost.com, despite losing the fifth most win shares and fifth most value over replacement players due to injury, the incredibly entertaining Suns are still taking care of business having won five straight. The Kawhi and Paul George-less Clippers have the second highest loss win shares metric, while the bottom feeding Magic hold the number one spot. LA and Orlando's injuries have led to on-court disasters, the Magic are 8-38, holding the league's worst record by far, and the Clippers are 22-24, down at number nine in the West. Conversely, for Phoenix, injuries or COVID setbacks haven't affected the Suns whatsoever as they've garnered the best record in the association by a good amount. 
you can attribute that to the man in charge, Monty Williams, laying out a balanced offensive slash defensive system. Of course, a lot of the praise goes to not only Chris Paul, but a lockdown, incredibly efficient 3 and D wing in Mikhail Bridges. Both Paul and Bridges have played in all 44 of Phoenix's games. Maybe the biggest brunt of the credit can be placed on the 2021 Executive of the Year in General Manager James Jones. Since being named the full-time GM of the Suns early in the 2018-19 season, Jones has built up a tremendous roster around the franchise player Devin Booker. The Suns have become a roster with supreme depth, as Cameron Johnson, Cameron Payne, Jay Crowder, the aforementioned Bridges, to go along with the newbies in JaVale McGee and Landry Shamit, combined to average 49.2 points per game. That right there is a nasty NBA depth chart. James Jones talked last offseason about building a roster like index cards in a 3x5 format, meaning three deep at all five starting positions. That strategy has been most successful at the center spot. Frank Kaminsky, who is yet another 10 point per game score for this Suns team, is currently injured. But even aside from Frank and DeAndre Ayton, who's of course the franchise center for this team, Phoenix has three more capable five men in their rotation. The sophomore out of Maryland and Jalen Smith has explosive hops and speed, standing at an intimidating 6'10". Smith has started in four games total so far, and his versatility on both ends of the floor has allowed the Suns to switch everything and take over with their overall quickness. Jalen's posted three outings of scoring 19 points while also tallying at least seven rebounds in those games. I've broken down the full impact of JaVale McGee in recent Suns videos I've made, which you can go watch after this, but the three-time NBA champion with the LA Lakers and Golden State Warriors has brought his excellent hands, springy finishing, and overpowering 7'6 wingspan to the Valley and made the Suns a much better team than I think a lot of people expected him to. Then there's Bismack Biombo, who was picked up on a COVID-19 hardship exception 10-day contract, a deal that's seen many talents across the league get let go after that 10 days expires. Not for Big Biz, though, as the 11-year veteran and, forgettably, the seventh overall pick way back in 2011's NBA draft scrapped his way onto the reigning West champs. In Biombo's first two games with Phoenix, he averaged 13.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 blocks, earning a contract for the rest of the year after that. And good on Bismack for staying hungry after locking up that deal, as in his last five outings since securing the bag, Biombo's plus-minus has been at least a plus-6, and over his last four games specifically, has posted 11-point and 7.3 rebound averages, making 68% of his field goals. Overall, the reason why you may underestimate the one NBA franchise from Arizona is because it's a humble group of players who don't stir up any type of serious drama in the headlines whatsoever. Also, the team plays in a smaller market with less nationally televised games, plus CP3 has a lot of doubters based off him never having won a ring before. But if you've paid any attention, the book is out on Paul, who instantly turns teams into winning ball clubs. Chris did it with the now bottom-feeding Oklahoma City Thunder and Houston Rockets. Now he's doing it in a fashion that's on a different level of special with the Phoenix Suns. Who's your favorite Phoenix Suns player right now? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. Leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Trickshotit, who says, I think the Bulls can easily build off this win. They're the top seed in the East, and although they have some hard games to come, I think they can win them. Once the Bulls are fully healthy, they'll be contending for a chance to win the championship. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.